Hello, welcome to my new YouTube channel. I do have another channel that some of you may have seen me on. I have a cleaning channel that I also do uh, called Jessica Vaughn. So you might already know me as Jessica, but, but yeah, I would thought I would start this new channel on just doing like um, some of the history, like maybe some of the golden age of uh, film and stuff and even some Titanic history, like stuff that I'm interested in. But anyways, thought you guys might like this channel too. So thought I'd start it up. And actually with today's um, story, this is kind of what got me into wanting to do these kind of stories, but because she is a favorite of mine, but I wanted to do the story on Olive Thomas, which some of you may know, some of you may not, but I just wanted to get her story across. So I thought I would, let you guys know about, you know, the tragic life of Olive Thomas. So let's get started. So Oliva R. Duffy was born on October 20th, 1894 in Charleroi, Pennsylvania. Hopefully I said that name right. <laughs> Her parents were James and Rena Duffy, both of Irish descent, and she was the eldest of three children. She had two brothers, names were James and William. Tragically though, her father, James, who was a steel worker, died in a work-related accident in 1906. Poor Olive was only 12 years old when this happened. Her mother, Rena, later married again to a man named Harry Van Kirk, and the two of them had a daughter together named Harriet, who was born in 1914, but she would also tragically die a car accident in 1931. Olive would leave school at the age of 15 to help support her siblings and her first job was selling gingham at Joseph Horn's department store. In April of 1911, age 16, Olive would marry Bernard Krug Thomas but the marriage would be short-lived and they separated after two years of marriage in 1913. Shortly after separating, Olive moved to New York City and she lived with a family member and then shortly got a job at a Harlem department store. Then in 1914, Olive entered and won the most beautiful girl in New York contest that was held by artist Howard Schaller Christie. This soon helped establish her career as an artist model and she would be featured on many um, magazine covers, including the Saturday Evening Post. There are some disputes on how Olive came to work for Zegfield. One story is that artist Harrison Fisher wrote a letter to Florence Zegfield, but then Olive just straight says that she just walked right up and asked for the job, <laughs> which I hope this story is kind of true because that that's pretty ballsy of her and that makes me love her even more. <laughs> Olive made her stage debut in the Zigfeld Follies in 1915 and her popularity had her go into the more risque Midnight Frolic. The Midnight Frolic was after hours on the roof of the New Amsterdam Theater. It was mostly a show for rich and famous males who were um, kind of encouraged to be a part of the show. The girls would wear scantily dressed balloons discreetly placed close enough to permit the men to like pop the balloons with their cigars. It was around about this time also that Olive divorced her husband on February 25th, 1915 under cruelty and neglect, but she would ultimately keep his last name and be Olive Thomas, as we know. Also, Olive began an affair with Sigfield, who was married to Billy Burke, who some of you may know played Glinda the Good Witch in The Wizard of Oz. But Florence Zegfeld was kind of known to have uh, affairs with a lot of his Zegfeld girls. Olive eventually ended the affair though because Zegfeld would not leave Billy to marry Olive. Then here's where we start getting into where Olive starts getting into her silent films because in 1916, Olive signed with International Film Company and made her on-screen debut in the Beatrice Fair Fairfax serials uh, in episode 10 called Play Ball, where she played Freedom Alone. A year later, 
Olive would appear in a Paramount production of A Girl Like That, and also that same year she would sign an exclusive contract with Triangle Pictures. Her first lead role would be in Madcap Madge that was released on June 24th, 1917. She would play a character named Betty. And then also in 1917, she would have made six films. In a newspaper article, she was known as Miss Inquisitive because uh, she would always ask questions on the set, like how things work. And when asked in the newspaper, why the thirst for knowledge, she is quoted saying, well, you see, I'm only a Follies girl and may turn out a flivver star in pictures. So I'd rather be prepared for a carpenter's job if necessary. Olive would meet Jack Pickford. And if this name sounds familiar, you may have heard of his sister who was America's sweetheart known as Mary Pickford who was a really big star at this time, uh, but they met at a beach cafe and were eventually to marry in secret in New Jersey on October 25th, 1916. With Thomas Megan, a fellow actor and friend, being their only witness. It took them close to a year to announce in public that they were husband and wife, but once the news was let out, they were known as Hollywood's golden couple. But the Pickford family was not happy about this marriage. Uh, Jack's mother, Charlotte, um, didn't think that Olive was a good enough actress to marry into the Pickford name. She thought that she would use the relationship to make herself a rival of Mary's. So that is why Olive never took the Pickford name. She would become a truly great star um, just to prove her mother-in-law wrong. She succeeded, but she was still never fully accepted by the Pickfords. Also, it was said that Jack and Olive were kind of playful in their marriage. Mary uh, Pickford is stated in her autobiography as saying they were like two children playing house. Also, with the marriage becoming public knowledge, the, pu the media started to put Mary Pickford and Olive Thomas against each other. Um, with, of course, Mary Pickford being known as America's Sweetheart. Olive quickly became known as everybody's sweetheart. It is said that Olive was the love of Jack's life, but their marriage was filled with conflict. Olive worked on the West Coast and Jack worked on the East Coast. So the newlyweds would ache to be in each other's arms during separation. But once they were together, they partied hard and they fought even harder, but then would make up with extravagant gifts. Then in December of 1918, Olive signs with Selznick Pictures and her first film is Upstairs and Down. And it was a successful film and established her image as a baby vamp. And if you're wondering what a baby vamp is, it is basically a young girl or woman who uses her attractiveness in a seduction to manipulate others, usually other males. After Upstairs and Down, she followed the roles with uh, Love's Prisoner and Out Yonder, which also came out in 1915. And unfortunately, a lot of Olive's films are considered lost films, but um, there are a few of them that I have found on YouTube that you can watch online if you're interested in seeing some of the films that Olive has been in. And in 1920, Olive would be in her most popular and successful film, which was called The Flapper, where Olive played a teenage girl named Ginger. And it was actually in this role that Olive was the first actress to portray the flapper lifestyle on film. And on October 4th, 1920, Olive's last film, Everybody's Sweetheart, was released. And in August of 1920, Olive and Jack decide to have a second honeymoon in Paris. Their marriage was kind of getting on the rocks, so to help with their marriage, they decided to take the second honeymoon. Soon after arrival, Jack left Olive to go on a brief trip to London with his ex-brother-in-law, Owen Moore, so they could get fitted for some new clothes. Once he came back though, the relationship seemed to be trouble-free 
at least for those few days before that eventful night. So on September 5th, 1920, that evening, the couple went out to dinner with a couple of friends. And then afterwards, you know, later that night, hit several nightclubs in the Montmartre district of Paris. And it was around 3 a.m. that Jack and Olive returned to their suite at the Hotel Ritz. And Jack went straight to bed, but Olive decided to stay up and write a note to her mother. Um, it wasn't too long after this though that I, I'm not sure if it was like the light or something. That's what I've heard. It was a, the light that, you know, was bothering Jack. So he kind of asked her to turn off the light. So a little bit later after she did that, she complained of a headache and went into the bathroom to grab some aspirin. And according to Jack, Olive shrieked, my God. Uh, he uh, jumped out of bed and rushed and uh, caught her in his arms. And she wanted to know what was in the bottle that she took. And, and when he read it, he said, poison. Olive had taken mercury bichloride. It was a topical solution that had been prescribed to Jack to treat his syphilis. And it is also used as a cleaning solution, kind of like Lysol. I've also heard that the bottle was in French, which may have added to her confusion with her being in, you know, it being late at night and also with her had it being alcohol throughout the night. And I also heard that um, back then, like aspirin bottles and what was the, uh, mercury bichloride bottles they kind of look similar to each other because they were like in a powder form but I don't know let, let me know for sure in the comments down below if that's true or not but that's that's what I've heard so you know with the lights being off it being dark she probably you know went to go grab the bottle and did not realize that instead of aspirin she was you know grabbing the mercury bichloride I've also heard that it was just already in um, or she was just going for the glass of water or something and you know took it with that thinking that you know or you know was taking the aspirin with the, the um water well what she thought was water but really had mercury bichloride R in it and then right afterwards olive was taken to the i hope i'm saying the name of this hospital right but the Novelli hospital it was an american hospital in paris but uh the poison had already took an over olive she had gone deaf and blind and shortly after that she uh was slipping into a coma five days though i can't believe that you know unfortunately it was five days that this poor girl had to just live in pain and agony um but five days on the morning of september 10th 1920 olive passed away um she was 25 and af afterwards an uh, autopsy was performed on her death and it was ruled an accident there have been rumors that suggest that it was suicide or also that you know they suggest that jack pickford himself might have murdered or you know some kind of speculation anyways with olive but i want to know your comments down below what you think might have happened to Olive wasn't an accident you know did she commit suicide because you know her husband had syphilis and might have eventually given it to her or you know if there was a life insurance policy on Olive and if Jack just wanted some extra cash but last one I don't really believe because you know his sister was Mary Pickford I'm pretty sure this guy was okay Jack then brought her body back to the United States and on September 25th, sorry, September 29th, 1920, a funeral service was held for Olive at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. Police escorts were needed for the event and one headline said that there was 15,000 in attendance for the funeral and women fainted and men had their hats cr crushed uh, and rushed to view the casket and fans scurried to grab flowers off of the casket. It was just a really sad and, you know, I mean, it was just a really 
inside like i can't even imagine what it would have been like like pretty much the first star to or you know hollywood star to pass away and you know these people who are fans of hers just you know seem to want a little piece of her as creepy as you know that sounds but this event was or you know not event but you know her death was the first of the Hollywood scandals. This was like the first big Hollywood scandal of the day. Um, shortly afterwards, Olive was interred into a mausoleum at Woodlawn Cemetery in New York. And also the mausoleum was supposed, was built for two that Jack was, you know, supposed to join her, you know, once he passed away. Cause the mausoleum, all it says is Pickford. You know, it doesn't say anything about Olive Thomas. It's just Pickford. But unfortunately, Olive is the only one that's in the mausoleum built for two. Um, and unfortunately, Jack Pickford died at the same hospital as Olive at the age of 36 in 1933. He is buried in the Pickford plot in Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. So unfortunately, these two, you know, while they were filming and stuff, they were living on different sides of the world, you know. There was her on the West Coast and Jack on the East Coast, but even in death, you know, they would also be separated from each other, which is really sad. But that is not the end of Olive's story. She is said to haunt the New Amsterdam Theater, the same theater that she was in when she was a Follies girl. But um, so they keep pictures of her at each entrance when the workers come in so the workers can come and greet her because it is said to keep her mischief at bay. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you I uh, enjoyed learning about Olive's life and her tragic end. Um, she will always be one of my favorite silent film stars that I've heard of. Just her life just fascinates me. Like just, she seemed to just be on the go, like from, from day one. Like she was just always just seemed like she had just so much life in her. And it's sad that, you know, unfortunately her life was cut short. And I'm hoping that more people can learn about her story and her story gets out there and you know more people know of all of thomas because unfortunately with a lot of her films being lost films i feel like you know a lot of people have forgotten about her and i don't really want her to be forgotten so but i hope you all liked this video if you did please give me a thumbs up you know comment down below subscribe to my channel if you would but i will see you all again in the next video bye